Thanks, guys. Man, that was awesome, brother. I love it. <laughs> um, so I've kind of got, I'm just kind of going to flow with the Holy Ghost if you don't mind. Um, yeah, and I'll just give you a little bit of background as well. Um, my testimony is probably too much to go into, so I just want to give glory to God. Just, just some, you know, points that um, really shaped and changed me. Um, yeah, and and yeah, of uh, just God's goodness and faithfulness. He's so faithful. But um, <clears throat> just quickly, I just want to go on, kind of um, from what our brother was kind of talking about, because um, I wanted to share a scripture, right? And see, with me when I met Jesus, um, I had this encounter while I was at work. And it was with the Holy Ghost. And I was, I'll just quickly go into it, but I was reading my horoscopes. And as I was reading my horoscopes, all of a sudden I felt a pinch on my chest. So something pinched me pretty hard. And so I looked down and it was right where my cross was, which, you know, I wore my cross because, you know, I was raised Greek Orthodox. It, I didn't live my life like that at all. I was living my life like a devil. Um, but... When that happened, I tripped down. I was like, oh, how did that happen? So, you know, I, I felt my cross to see if something could have pinched me. Um, maybe it was a, a sharp edge, nothing happened. Anyways, I chose to ignore it and I went back to reading my horoscopes. And as I'm reading my horoscopes, um, I hear the Lord uh, speak very loudly to my heart. And he said, stop reading these horoscopes because they're bad for you. And so the fear of the Lord came upon me in that moment. Um, it wasn't just some kind of soft whisper or it was like thunder and it scared me. And I went into this place of, of trembling yet awe and wonder and I knew it was God. There was no denying it. So I went into my car and I started repenting and I'm crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, God, that was you. And I know that that was your voice. And I'm so sorry, Jesus, for everything I've done. But the thing was, is that the year prior to that, I was heavily in drugs. Um, you know, I was addicted to ice. Um, I was in this relationship that was a very codependent, unhealthy, crazy kind of relationship. And so we were both off track. Yet in the moment that I met Jesus, I actually decided to stop smoking drugs. So we, we, we did stop and about, it was about three weeks later that I had that encounter. But in that year prior to, I actually was being attacked by demons. Um, all this crazy stuff was happening. I thought my boyfriend's house was haunted, so I'd like leave there at three in the morning. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm scared, you know. But what happened was during that time is that God was actually speaking to me, but I just thought it was my conscience. So, and my, my conscience, my conscience was saying to me to be honest to him about uh, lying to him. Like when I first met him, um, I was unfaithful and I cheated and I, I lived with that uh, lie. And all of a sudden my heart started changing and I, I felt like I needed to tell him. But I chose to ignore it. I kept pushing it away until I had that moment, that supernatural encounter with the Lord, that I married the two voices up. I was like, oh my gosh, that was not my conscience speaking to me. That was you nudging at me, Holy Ghost. But in that moment, I was, I went on this quest asking God, how did I just change so instantly? Like, how did I, the moment that I met the Lord, like I, I had surrendered my life. Um, besides the boyfriend, I didn't surrender that, but I, my heart changed. He gave me a new heart, a new spirit. I felt it. I hated what was evil. I loved what was good. Even though I was still in that, I was still in that world of evilness, if you want to call it, just the friends that I hung out with. Yeah, but, but my heart had changed. And I asked God, what happened? You know, how did all that happen? And he did show me, you know, years prior to that, Andrew had, I bumped into Andrew at a friend's birthday and he, he shared the gospel with me and I wasn't ready right then and there to receive it, but he planted a seed and that seed grew over time. So, you know, in Mark 4, where I won't get you guys to go there, but where it says, you know, the farmer, um, the kingdom of heaven is like a seed that is planted. And regardless if the farmer goes to sleep or he wakes up, that seed's going to grow. And that's what happened over that time. But I was like, okay, God, but how did I have that? The encounter that I had, it was it was with the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I don't know if you guys know, but there's, you know, 11... Um, aspects or facets of the spirit. And one of them is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And see, 
The spirit of the fear of the Lord is going to bring us in awe and wonder, in reverence of the Lord, um, of God, of, of Jesus, of Father God. Um, it's going to bring us in adoration where we don't want to not walk with Him, where we don't want to not be obedient to His voice. You know, it brings us into a place of submission where we can't help but be in love with Him and, and have respect for Him and want what He wants and want Him so badly, regardless of what's around you, you know, to leave the world behind. So um, I want to share with you a scripture that the Lord ended up showing me last year um, and He kept breathing on this scripture. And I'm like, what are you, what are you saying to me, God? Um, anyways, Papa showed me that, uh, so it's, it's Proverbs 2, verses 3 to 5. I'm going to go to actually start from verse 1, but it's, it's mainly 3. So it says, my, are we ready? Yeah. My child, um, shall I read it with this one? What's, okay. I'll read it with the NLT. So my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Turn your ear, or tune, sorry, your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. He actually gives us the answer. So it, it, it's when you start doing those things, when you start seeking for wisdom and crying out for discernment um, and wanting that, even though back then I was doing that, I didn't know who I was doing it to, but my inside me, I was crying out for discernment. I wanted wisdom. I needed to know. I was searching. I was seeking and that's what then gave me that encounter with the spirit of the fear of the Lord because then I was able to understand what it means to fear the Lord. Um, so just like you were saying, you know, with, with coming to God, crying out to Jesus, um, there is a seeking. He draws us to Himself, but then there's also a hunger in us to want to know Him, to want to seek Him, to want to, uh, you know, seek His face, to want to no actually know Him, not just His hand, not just His miracles, not just, but who He is, to know Him intimately, to know Him deeply, to have a deep relationship with Him because He loves us. He loves us so, so much and He demonstrates that on the cross. He's like, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm not going to just say it, that I love you. I'm going to actually demonstrate it on the cross. I'm going to die for you. I'm going to send my son, first of all, and he's going to die for you. He's going to leave his kingdom and come as a, as a man, as a human to relate to us. And I'm going to die. I'm going to be whipped. I'm going to be tortured, die on the cross, be resurrected after, you know, the three days and bring you back to me. So we can have a deep and intimate relationship. This is a big deal. This is extreme. And this is what sets us free from everything, from everything. Um, oh, yeah, gosh, sorry. Just going to flow with that. But um, that's what sets us free, right? That relationship with him. This, this, the word of God, like you were saying, it, this, this will never perish. This will never pass away. This is Jesus. This, Jesus is the word of God. He was the Word in the beginning. He was with God and was God in, in John 1. He is the very substance of this Word that we get to read. So I don't know how many of you actually get into your Bible or if you do or if you don't or whatever, but can I encourage you? Please, man, seek Him out. This is like going on a date with the Lord. This is like going, going with your beloved, going with your husband, going with your wife and being intimate with them. You know, without the group, without uh, the, the congregation, in a, in a secret place to seek Him, to read who He is. And then because the Word of God is, is breathed, it's, it's Jesus, but the Holy Spirit breathes on that. And then it, it comes into us, it transforms our mind and it gets, you know, put into us. And then we become that. So if God is love, like it says in the Word, right? God is a consuming fire. That's what we want. We want His love, who He is. We want His fire. That's who He is, right? So when we're swollen, when we're eating this, when we're chewing the Word of God and having that intimate time, like, God, I want to know you. Why are you saying this? Who, you know, show me um, who you are. That's going to transform my mind. Where was I going with that? I, I kind of lost it. Um, but anyway, that's being intimate with Him, right? That's getting to know Him. This is a secret place. Then when we're going through trials, when we're going through tribulations, when we're going through hard times, when our faith is tested, we're not going to be shaken or moved. 
We're going to be standing firm on the Word of God, which is truth. We're not going to have fear. We're going to walk in love. We're going to become love. That's where I was going before. We're going to actually literally become love. That's going to be our very identity because we're made in the image of God. So we're reading this. We're, we're looking in the face of love. We're, we're communing with Jesus. He's coming into us, transforming us from the inside out. And what are we doing? We're becoming love. We're not going to have worries with, with uh, envy, with jealousy, with hate. We, we're going to want to edify our brother and sister because we're family, because that's what love does. Love doesn't boast. Love is not envious. Love is not, you know what I mean? God is a jealous God, but He's not envious. You know, there's a difference. Envious is evil. Jealous is like, I am jealous for you. I want you. And He wants our whole heart. He wants our whole heart. That's the first commandment, yeah? To love God with all our heart all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, all of that. Second is to love others as ourselves. If I don't know the love of God, how am I going to then love someone else the way that I'm loved, the way that I love myself? How? If I don't know what that love looks like. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I can't give something that I don't have that I... So if I've got... um, Actually, I'm going to cut myself off there. I'm going to go back to my testimony quickly. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do that a bit, so just keep up with me, yeah? Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I had this encounter with Jesus, go back to doing drugs because I'm repenting so hard and I'm so scared of, of, of being honest, even though I really wanted that. God just kept, oh, just these miracles after miracles um, that he was doing inside of my life. And um, I'm just going to just name a few because I just want to give him glory, <laughs> Um, yeah, so he would like wake me up in the middle of the night with like this, a a sound like a triangle, like the instrument, and it would ting in the middle of the night and I would wake up and it was always at the the time when, um, you know, something bad was going to happen or someone needed me or I needed to call someone, um, or yeah, because I had my boyfriend end up being, you know, suicidal and and all of that and and really heavily on the drugs. But um, God would always come in. He didn't care about where we were, what we were doing. He came and met me in that place and he he would wake me up. Um, You know, there were times where, um, yeah, he would would tell me I'd be driving and I'd be going to someone's house and he would come and tell me, don't go to that house. And I'd be like, look, God, I can hear you, but I'm going to go to that house anyway. So I was disobedient because I didn't have that revelation of how much he loved me, of what he did for me on the cross. And so I'd go to this house and something bad would always happen, whether that would be I'd do drugs um, or just, yeah, being attacked by um, the enemy when I would do drugs. So it would open up the gateways to hell, you know. Um, I would be treated so badly because I, I then heard it, you know, my partner I'm with, um, yeah, he would, yeah, he, he would treat me badly because, well, that's not his identity either, but he's so hurt, he didn't know how else to treat me. Yet God would always come in and intervene in those moments every single time. Um, he, would, he would change the atmosphere, he would change the situation and I would cry out to him. But what he kept doing was showing me the cross, showing me what Jesus did for me. And then one day I was in the car and I had, um, you know, I was up all night because I had smoked drugs um, and the Lord came and spoke to me and he said to me, look, and and by this stage I did not want that obviously because my heart had changed but I was too weak to say no to the drugs um, when it was in front of me. So in my weakness though, he was the one who became strong for me. He strengthened me. He came and met me and then empowered me by his grace, by his mercy to eventually be able to say no. Um, but he came in in that car and he met me even though I was high and I was, I was up for, you know, a couple of days. He came and showed me and, and said to me, look, I love you just as much as when you're doing good as well as when you're doing bad. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I still love you with, a, with an everlasting love. That revelation, because I heard from God and that spoke to my heart, that actually set me free so I was able to say no to drugs. That actually set me free that I wanted holiness more than anything else. 
I decide to be obedient. I decide to say no to everything else and everyone else. And I went into hiding kind of thing. I, I went away from my, all my friends and my family because I was like, no, I need you, God. And every time he would just rock up. Every time he was just, he's so faithful. He's so good to us, you know. Um, yeah, like there was a time where because I had, you know, talked about Jesus so much and the partner that I was with, he was not a believer. Um, there was a, a moment there that, um, you know, I, and I fell pregnant and because of fear and of darkness and being uh, in this hole where it was just him and I and God, um, you know, I decided to to have an abortion. Yet I'm in the secret place and I'm like, Daddy, God, please help me because I don't really want to do this, but I feel like I have no choice. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, in a box and a, a fear that was surrounding me, um, making me believe, deceiving me to believe that that was the only way out, that that was the only choice that I had, which it wasn't. And I was like, Dad, you have to help me because my partner had wanted, he was like, out of fear again, like, nah, I, you know, we're so rocky. We're not even together really anymore um, because of, you know, the hurt that I'd brought um, and, you know, coming, you know, bringing to light this, this lie that I had. Um, we weren't, we were so rocky. And he's like, no, nah, we can't have a, a baby. This is crazy. Anyway, so as we're driving to the abortion clinic, so he ends up crying out to God. He's like, look, God, if you're real, please give me a sign, a sign with light. Um, get someone to flash their high beams or, or get a lightning to, to come down or, or something to happen with light. Anyways, as we're driving, nothing happened. But then when we got to the, the actual clinic and sitting in there and filling out the forms and whatever you do, you know, in the reception, all of a sudden the, the power to the whole building just goes out and we're sitting there in pitch black, like in pitch darkness. And he was like, oh my gosh, God, that's you. That was his sign that he needed. And he's like, look, we've we got to go. This is not the right choice. We have to leave this place. Um, so we didn't end up going through with that, you know. Um, again, God's faithfulness, God's grace, God's love in a time of darkness, in a time of, of, of you know, evilness, whatever, he comes in and saves the day. He's so faithful to us. So I want to encourage you with whatever you've got going on today, um, you know, if you do have problems, if you do have whatever it is, if you have a situation in front of you, um, you don't have to actually worry because you've got Jesus and he's faithful. Even when you're not faithful, he's faithful. And then he makes you faithful because you receive such faithfulness, such loyalty, such love, such goodness and kindness, that leads us to repentance, but that leads us to want him and him only. So it's like he actually, what he gives us, it's actually what we end up becoming. So we need to be receivers of this love, right? We need to be have, have our hearts open um, and have our, be teachable, have a humble heart, be teachable, believe his word, just believe him, regardless of what's going on. No, your word says this, so I'm going to believe and stand on this truth, not on my situation. And he's going to come rushing in and he will be, you will see his, the miracle in your life. You will see um, whatever it is that the need that you have, he cares for that. So he's going to give that to you. How much time do we have? Sorry? Okay. Um, yeah, he's just so, so good. Yeah, so don't, don't trip out or, or be fearful if you don't know what's ahead. We're all, we're all searching, what is your will, God? What, what am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be going? Da, da, da. But if we're just seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else will be added unto you. If we're in Romans 12, um, just quickly... In Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So in that, 
you know, give yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice. So surrender your life, surrender your will, surrender your desires, surrender, you know, what the other person has done to you, if they have been, you know, nasty to you, whatever. Just surrender it anyways, right? Because that's um, a true and holy sacrifice, yourself, your choice, you know. Um, And don't copy the behaviours and the customs of the world. We're going to bring heaven's culture here, not, not the world's culture. Um, and let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we don't need to know everything. We don't need to know all the answers. We don't need to trip out about, oh, my gosh, I don't know this God, I don't know that. You know what? You know the person that does know, and that's all that matters. You know him. You're seeking him. You want his righteousness because now you've become righteous. He's made you righteous. He's made you holy. So now you can actually walk that out and everything else will be added unto you. Your mind will be renewed where you believe the word of God over everything else. You believe that, you know, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. That's true. That's something that's been given to you. You do have the kingdom of heaven within you. So you don't need to be tripping out about what is your will what is my will? Where am I? Am I meant to be going to, you know, Holland? Am I meant to be going to this? Wait, wait. You're in his will right now, right here. You're seeking him. And as you're walking, he's going to direct your path. He's going to take you. So, yeah, you know, I have gone into finance and this is God. God was, I asked God, what do you want to do? Where are we going? And he put me into finance, right? But because I didn't understand it, and I'm like, 100% I'm meant to be here. This is definitely your will. But for some reason in my heart, I'm still not completely surrendered to you in this because it's not my 100% passion. But the thing is, God is so strategic. He's so smart. He's so intentional. When he says something, even though I may not have the the biggest passion for um for finance, that has actually grown the more that I've said yes to him, the more I'm like, yes, I can't wait for this. Even though I didn't know why he was putting me in finance. To me, I want to go and do missions. I want to go and do this. I want to go out on the streets and just, you know, reconcile people back to God. I'm still doing that anyways. I'm still doing that in the workplace. I'm still doing that outside of the workplace. It doesn't matter where I'm going. I'm still going to be reconciling people to, to, to him. You know, I'm still bringing his love, but this is what he's asked for me to do because he's being intentional and strategic. Now, with a passion that is on my heart, which is all the way up here, so I'm not there yet. I haven't gotten to this destination. He's given me prophetic words. He's spoken to my heart. He's given me dreams, visions, and all of that, but it's still in in the distance. It's still a little bit far away, yet I'm here, so there's these, these steps that need to be taken to get to that, but I can't be jumping there out of season, because there's a season for everything, yeah? So I need to take the steps, keep seeking him, keep seeking him, keep walking with him, keep walking in him, keep allowing him just to flow through me. He's going to equip me with tools. He's going to equip me with with um, ideas, with, with connections, whatever it is, on the journey for this destination, for this, the, the, the passion and the plan that he has, which is over here. But And that's with all of us, right? I'm sure all of you have some kind of passion. You have something burning in your heart. And it's like, well, how do I get there, God? But just enjoy the journey. Enjoy it today. Keep seeking his face. You don't need to know every single step because then that's not faith. That's not actually holding his hand and say, you know what, God, I don't know everything, but I'm going to trust you anyways. You said this to me. You spoke this to me, which is over here, which is in the distance. But I know that you, your plans and your ways are perfect and they're high. And he's so smart, man. He's so smart. He's so strategic. So don't trip out, why aren't I there yet? Enjoy this journey right now, hear where you are. Enjoy the word. Enjoy having a date day with him because that's, that's at the end of the day, this is the only relationship that really counts. This is what sets us free. This is how we get to treat people in love. This is how we get to get to our passion because we get to know him right now in this, in this situation. He needs to strengthen you. He needs to equip you to get there because we're not qualified yet for there. We're, we're on this journey now with him. 
So I just want to encourage you, keep seeking his face. Keep falling in love with him. He's so worthy. He's so trustworthy. He loves you more than anyone can ever love you. You know, he's worth your time. Make time for him. Go and have a date day with him. If you don't know how to do it, that's cool. Tell him. Just say to him, God, I want to spend time with you. Teach me what time of the day is good for you. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be every day the same thing. But he just wants that intimate time with you where he gets to show himself to you so that you can then trust him when you get to this destination. You can trust him when you get to the plans and the wills that he has down here. But don't despise the small beginnings here. You know what I mean? Sometimes we just keep dreaming big, but, but walk the journey out with him here and enjoy him, seek his face, seek his kingdom, bring righteousness, you know? Change the atmosphere as you're walking to that destination and just trust him. Again, if you don't know how to trust him, ask him. Teach me how to trust you, Lord. Get in the word. Get your mind renewed, you know? Don't be lazy. Like, don't just come on to church on the Sunday and then leave, you know? Um, be diligent. Say to him, draw me into a place of intimacy with you, God. Help me know Father, Holy Spirit and Son. Help me know who you are to me. Help me know who you are to me because that's what it's about because then we can give it to other people in full form. Yeah, anyways, praise God. Yeah. Woo.